Good evening, boys and girls, wherever in the world you might be. Good morning, good afternoon. We have made it to the end of another week. It's one of our favorite moments of the week. I hope you have come prepared, people, because Super Kev, as always, has. It's the Highbury Squad live weekly fan Q&A with Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. I'll stop rambling. Let's go. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Good evening, everyone. Hello. I've done it all. Welcome to the podcast, my brother from another mother, Mr. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. Well, these at ease, guys. At ease, we've fa- we made it to Friday. <laughs> we literally have. We got a massive game this weekend. Hello to all the usual suspects in the house. Super Kev. Before we get stuck in to this week's Kevin says and your fantastic questions, um, I have a little housekeeping. Okay. Really? Yep. Yes, Go on. Yes. So yesterday we had a fantastic show with Jay Demerit, um, yes. Watford legend, Excellent. doing amazing things on and off the pitch, of course. And during said show, the squaddies decided to have a conversation about Indian food. And I, I hate like to bring. Indian. I know, but you won't like the next bit. They've had this conversation before, and I'm like, is it necessary? The com- conversation evolved to farts. Okay? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes, Matty K, we <laughs> is in trouble. Newman, gulp. Taib, yes, you're going to poison Matty's tea. Martin, you were involved too. Oh, jeez. Sorry, I have a list, Kev. I have oh, a list. Oh, please, give me the list. Let me read them out. I warned them that we were going to revisit this. And I'd just like to say, Lone Star, you were the classiest person in chat last well night. Done, okay. Well done, Lone right. Star, Londoner. Tammy, I know you love Indian food, but I'm not sure if you were in chat yesterday. You are exempt Mark, at the beginning, I I exonerated you. Yeah, exonerated. But when I went back to look at live chat, Mark. You're as guilty (laughs) as the others, I bet. Okay, I've got my notes. Look at my little notes on my post-it right here. Is that how many? (laughs) Well, let's let's read the register. (laughs) Oh, come on. (laughs) Demsec, I'm shocked at your behavior yesterday too. Newman, you did start it. No, to be fair to Newman, he said, I once dated the most beautiful Indian woman. And then, shockingly, not shockingly for Taib, Matty K took it to a whole other level. All right, Kev? Right? Yeah. You especially are in a timeout. So, I have Taib, Newman, Demsec, Matty K, Arnie, Dubba Ducky, Mark, Victor, Arsenio Wonga, Uta B, and Carl Logan, all yellow cards. Yellow carded. Oh, jeez. Lads, (laughs) and everybody involved, come on. Keep it keep it clean. <laughs> okay. Kev, Matty K was the is it the protagonist? Orchestra, the orchestrator. The prote- yes. He was the orchestrator. Yes, he was. Listen to this. One of his um dinosaur's favourite curry, Madrasic Park. No, okay. No. That's yep. the yellow just for that. <laughs> right. Dinosaurs eaten when dinosaurs eat a spicy curry, what's it called? A very saurus. Madonna has re-released Papa Don't Preach. It's called Papa Don Preach. I mean, late night jokes, fine. You know, a lot of these are good. Taib then goes Italian on us halfway in the middle of it and says, did you hear about the Italian chef who died? He passed it away. <laughs> you're, you're rocky. Listen, when you're coming in, you better hit that like button. These jokes are the worst, man. My goodness. <laughs> 
Jesus, please. Pass that away. Oh. Sophie, look, uh, we could go on with this for about an hour. Yeah, I'd like to tell you that much. <laughs> but I'm, I'm honestly, Ask is saying, did, should they get a red card? No, they shouldn't get a red card because you warned them. You give them one warning, not mm. a straight red. So you give them a yellow. Any more of that and they're out of here. Yeah, well, Ta- I think Tai might be on a ban. I'm going to have to count check. over the <laughs> over the weekend super kev and he may actually now be on a ban he has the most yellow cards of any squaddy uh, newman has accumulated a couple shockingly good for her virginia was not in the house um danny says seven red cards means match abandoned they're getting close danny they are getting close all right you guys are hilarious um <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Let's see what they do. I'm not sure they would be treating you as fairly as we are. Right. You guys crack us up. Um, had to throw that in. The pasta joke was terrible. But... Taib is worse than Xhaka. Listen to that, G. <laughs> hey, don't start ratting on each other now, turning against each other. You're all in it together. Yes. Keep defending each other. Don't turn on each other at all. Taib's the Patrick Vieira of the group. <laughs> all right. Well, brilliant stuff. As you saw, I did my homework. And um, Matty K, let's just say... You would have got a straight red, but Super oh, Kevin Campbell geez. saved you right here. Okay, um, let's get to it, shall we? We've got a big game this weekend. Super Kev, oof, wait till you see what he's wearing this week. Let me just tell you. Here we go. Three questions. Be prepared. Get ready to talk some football. And I tell you, another yellow. Some of you got a red tonight. Let's go. Hi, this is Kev Says, Sophie, and all the squaddies. Going to salute you. And I want to get straight into it. So question number one. Are we slowly seeing a proper foundation being built at the Arsenal Football Club? That's question one. Firstly, (laughs) that bow tie and hanky is fire, Super Kev. Absolute Thanks. fire. A bit different this week. A I bit love different. It. Gone for the green. The I love green it. with the green polka dot. With the with the white polka dot and Yeah. I love it. It's um it's fly. It's very fly. Um and, and by the way, I will be on. Usually we do this at the end, yes. but I'm gonna do it now as we're speaking about do it, Kev. I am on Sky Sports News 10 till 12 on Sunday. Okay. Yep. And then I will be whisked away as I am on my way to the Emirates. Boom! For the Watford game. So hopefully, you, I will send you some videos from there. Epic. And you're our lucky charm. Let's be honest. You Last are time our I was lucky there against charm. Watford. Last time I was there against Watford, we beat them 3-0 comfortably. <laughs> Absolutely. He is looking sharp. That is super, super fly. Um, no, it's not Thursday, but he records them on Thursday. This yes. is the beauty of it. So we get a little bit of everything. You get a taste. Yeah, yeah we get a taste. All right, let's start getting some of your responses here, everyone. Taib says, what foundation? Um, well, here's the scoop. Why don't you con- put that in context? So what is your criteria for saying you don't think there's a foundation? The foundation, I think, is the beginning, is the players, Kev. It's Ramsdale, yeah. it's Tommy Yasu, it's Ben the- White. The togetherness, what, what what we're actually seeing on the pitch, we're seeing better performances, we're seeing mm-hmm. better defending, we're seeing the team together. Remember, remember the first three games of this season, the first three games of this season and the team now are worlds apart. We are not where we want to be, but we are worlds apart. So again, are we slowly building a foundation, a real foundation at the Arsenal? Okay, so let me get some more comments up for you, Kev, because I I feel like a foundation starts somewhere, and I guess we're somewhere where we haven't been in a while, which is what gives me a little bit of hope, right? Mm-hmm. So you look and see certain games like maybe Brighton. Would we have escaped with a point from a game like that two years ago? 
even as poorly as we played against Norwich and Burnley, but yet we walked away with wins, you know, how would we have fared in matches like that? Certain situations in defence, goalkeeping situations. I think the small wins become big wins in the building of the foundation. But let's see what the squaddies say. Uh, Guna Vettel says, no, it's too early. Matthew Hudson, good evening, Matthew. Our Vinny Giffy creator. Mm -hmm. He says, yes, we are. Salute to Matthew. Salute to Matthew, definitely. Arnie says, Arnie, you were in trouble last night too. He <laughs> says, yes, but Arnie, tell us why you say yes. Raul says, I need, I still need consistency, but the signs are promising. Kev, we've talked about consistency being one of our keywords this season. Well, if you still need to see consistency, what do you mean by consistency? Because over the last, what is it, nine, ten games, we've been consistent. We've picked up points. We haven't lost. So that is being consistent. And, and, and I'm not saying, and here's the thing, remember, I said, are we slowly starting to see a foundation? Yeah. I'm not saying we're, we're so far down the road. So let's answer the question, squaddies. Slowly. Keyword, keyword is slowly, right? Yes. Um, Dennis says, seems like it, yeah. Uh, Harvey says, yes, we got more players now we can relate to. True. This That's is so true. important, Harvey. We talked about this on the show a lot this week, about having relatable, likable players that you want to cheer on, that Kev, when they wear the shirt, you see pride. It's definitely a big difference. This time 100%. last season, even with Arteta in charge, this, this time last season, we a big difference in attitude, DNA and culture. Yeah. We were struggling, Sophie. And, mm -hmm. you know, at times we clashed last season because I kept saying about crossing the white line. And, and let's be honest, I agree that the, the, the performances of the team weren't good enough. And it's easy to say the manager, the manager, manager. And the manager come under serious flack, didn't he? We were losing mm -hmm. at home too many times. We were, we were passive. Sophie, weren't we? We were weak Very. source, we were passive, etc. We weren't aggressive enough. And we only saw aggression really in the second half of the season. A bit more aggression. Yes. But I think now we're starting to see a bit more. The team has a bit of personality. Personality is a good word, definitely. That, that helps with that foundation. Yeah, I know some people are struggling with identity. And maybe that's going to come to fruition at some point in a more overt way. But personality, I don't think you can deny that currently this team is building a totally different persona um, with characters. So as Sam says, yes, the future is bright. We are back top four on its way. Very, very ambitious there, Sam. But I like it. I like your positivity. Mark says, yes, we are super Kev. Arteta out. Mark? treading on thin ice here. What do you mean, Arteta out? Explain. Patrick says, yes, but not slowly. Uh, Mo says, Kev proving them wrong again. Anik says, got to believe we are. Mm -hmm. Zamir says, Zamir is the one that coined the phrase of you being the lawyer, Kev. Proper foundation is a loaded question. Are no, we talking isn't. on the pitch? Okay, Kev, your no, response. Isn't. Proper, proper foundation is a, 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 a slow build of a foundation is not a loaded question. As a fan, it's what you see on the pitch. So have we made strides from where we were? Are we better than where we were? were and are we more consistent than where we were? Are the players more relatable? Is there a personality? Is there character? And if you say no to any of them, then you're obviously not watching the same game that I am. I await Zamir's response to you. Uh, Martin, we built a foundation <laughs> and a moat out of Taib's <laughs> He cried on his, he might get a bad, he's crying, is he? <laughs> and Martin. now he's sucking up, look, big up, Super Kim. Uh, Johnny Boy says, I believe so, I feel strangely confident. I do too. As critical as I've been, I think what it is, Kev, and you, you know, you can come at me, anyone here, but I be I haven't believed in Arteta as much, but I really believe in these players. I, f I finally think there are players here that are... Remember when you said that we have uncoachable players? And you were right. 
There were a lot of players in the Arsenal squad that were uncoachable. But I feel like there's a group of players now who are so professional and mature as footballers that whether it's Arteta or whether it's Graham Potter or whether it's Pep Guardiola, they're trainable, coachable players. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, because they're doing what he wants. And at the end of the day, Sophie, it's, it's all very well trying to plan on a training ground. Because the key always, always comes up when the players take the pitch. Can they execute the plan? And we haven't seen them. We, we saw them execute a plan in the FA Cup, mm -hmm. which was great. But you know as well as I do, the league is a different kettle of fish because you have to, you have, to have that, that character and personality to go week in, week out. Back to back to back, you know, you, and, and this team isn't there yet. But yeah. we are, again, slowly are we starting to see a foundation. Right. That's why I asked that question. Okay, let me fire off a few for you here and we'll move on to the next question. We can't really answer this until at least May, says why not? Future Shock. Why not? What do you see now? <laughs> what do you see now? We're not saying you're going to convince and you're going to be doing cartwheels. But again, I will repeat the question, Future Shot. Are we starting to see, slowly see, a foundation being built at the Arsenal? 100%, mm -hmm. Craig. 100%. And the, the players take the plaudits, but are we starting to see a foundation of the team, of the club? Okay, let me catch up on a ton of these messages. They're moving pretty fast tonight. Good, I wanted good. to get, let's go. Come let's on. Get, um, let's get some of these up for you. Uh, foundation start at the bottom. That's where we were. That's Brady's banana. It's true. Kev, zero points, three games, no goals. We were rock bottom. Awful. We were awful. Awful. We were dire. Dire. We were awful. You know, look where we are now possibility Sophie we get three points on Sunday we could be full fifth yeah after the first three games if I'd have said that to you now we'd be there you would have said no we won't right sorry if I missed some of the earlier messages but um, here we go um, putting these up real quick we have finally got a fantastic spine all great teams have one um Archangel says, fun fact, we beat Brighton last season. Hastings Guna says, yes, definitely always been the best way. Uh, let's see. You can be beaten by any team, not just Liverpool. I think the changes in defence are proving invaluable. Well said, Liz. Well said, Liz, yep. Elliot, um, foundation without proper cement leads to nowhere. We will see if Arteta is that cement. Mm, Elliot, very profound. Come on, Elliot, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Cement foundation. I like the analogy, Kev. It's no, no, no. But, oh, no, but we're talking about what we're seeing now. So if, if you're going to give the manager stick before when we're not doing so well, <laughs> how could you all of a sudden say, well, it's not, it's obviously the manager doesn't help. He's not the cement. Well, it's his players. It's his team since that first international break. And they, they haven't lost yet. And I'm not, yeah. again... I'm not saying we are where we want to be, but are we starting to slowly see a foundation? Yeah, I guess, yes, we'll get to that with the players versus the manager because that's an ongoing thing. I think that's going to be able to come to fruition at the end. We're going to see it at the end of this show, I could tell you that much. <laughs> Dennis says we've got to slap Watford and hold our own against Liverpool for me to be convinced. Um, Lone Star says, Lone Star, welcome back. And also Swedish Guna, um, did I put your comment up? Uh, we sure do have a spine now. Great partnership all the way from Ramsdale to the attack. Good to see Swedish Guna back in the house, Kev. Right, Lone yep. Star, unquestionably, yes, far better defense structure and personnel. We're, aren't, we're not losing like 12 months ago, but need to see 15 to 20 games to know more. I think that's fair. I know you're saying now. No, he's saying yes. He's saying yeah. unquestionably yes, yeah. but rightfully so. Everybody will tend to maybe get convinced after 15, 20 games and you say, do you know what? This is, there's been real consistency 
But I'm, we can only talk about the snapshot now, can't we? Yeah. Tewo says, I relish our improvement. We still show respect to opponents at some point in the game. I agree with that. Second half, we've got to improve. Lone Star, again, nine games un unbeaten. Hastings, Guna, the, by the back five looks set. Uh, Ol Olivia says, we have a lobby to build on. Um, Raul says, what I mean by consistency is the performances, not the results. Only Alistair, Gabriel going at Johnny Evans for kicking at Ramsdale. Love the covering for the team. Not sure we had that before. That's part of that growth, Kev. Well said, Alistair. Yeah, yeah, well said. Another well one said. for you from Wayne. Absolutely, there's a foundation, one of the best defenses in the league. Loads of young talent with high ceilings. They're cohesive. They're hungry. K Marlon. There is a foundation. Players are learning to dig in. The English core is also getting strong and something to build on. There's a pride to play for the Arsenal. Boom. Love Matty that. Kay trying to make a comeback after yesterday. <laughs> the camaraderie is looking pretty good. I think if we can stay injury-free, we will go on a good run. Kev, it, staying injury-free is so important, isn't it? I mean, it always is. But knowing that we still don't have that turnkey full squad. I mean, yes, you've got Martinelli on the bench. You know, yes, you've got Udegaard. You've got a couple, but... Pepe when, and all that, yeah. Yeah, but when but you key still positions, have, yeah. key positions, I think we, we can't do with Gabriel coming out. That's for sure. No. Because we are weaker without him. Ramsdale, I think, we'd be weaker without him too. I think Tommy Asu, he's going about his business nice and quietly, Sophie. Nobody really talks too much about him, although they respect his defensive qualities. But let's be honest, so he has shored up that that leaky right hand side it's of true. our defence. It's true. He has you know? credit where it's due. Whether it's Tierney or Tavares, they they have been fantastic on the left hand mm -hmm. side. So yeah, yeah, we're, we're improving. All right, I'll fire up a few more. Upi says the foundation is being built, but we need to at least place higher in the table to know if this foundation is worth keeping. Two, two guns, Tony. There's a there's a screen name for you, Kev. Um, yes, the players who, <laughs> who aren't good enough were first team players last season. Very true. Riddy says let's revisit this converse, conversation after Old Trafford next month. Riddy, okay. why, why, why should we revisit it? Why not discuss it now? Tell him, Riddy. Tell him why. Come back at the ledge. Yeah. And let him know let's, why. Let's discuss it now. Because you know what? A month down the line, who knows what's going to happen? Let's talk now. It's Kev says today, not in a month's time. <laughs> okay. For me, this question is the most that I would felt, and which is why I'm spending a little bit more time on it, Kev, because they have a lot to say about Good. this. Nicola, Good. slowly, yes, but we need to maintain momentum, Super Kev. Fair. That's fair. That's mm -hmm. fair. Yes, I agree with that. That's fair. Stephen Foote, the founder of the word squaddies, mentality is vastly improved in my opinion. Well said, Stephen. Well said. Well said. Johnny Boy escaped punishment last night. We can see a process in movement, consistency, the holy grail. That is, for the Arsenal, that really is the holy grail. It is the holy grail. It really is. Again, I don't want to delve too much into what I'm going yep. to say at the end, but, you know, it's that's a fair shout. Rich says, the foundation is a slow pour, but looking more solid. Avon says, not as slowly as the last couple of seasons. We've been on the down slope and now we're on the up. All right. Brilliant responses from you guys. Um, Arnie says it's the young players that they're bringing in and that we can build on that. Liz adds the Arteta 100 games this week, second most successful manager at this stage. <gasps> it, it's the stat I haven't wanted to share. Oh, Liz, I love it, Liz. Well said, Liz. Do you know what, Liz? You read my mind. You're going to have to wait until the next questions come out. But Liz, well said. And you remember, I'm supposed to be, I'm deluded and I'm crazy and I'm Arteta's lawyer. But everybody batters him with stats that go against us. Let's see what the squad is say to that. Yes. Alisola. What You're included name. in that, so <clears throat> I have that JPEG. I just haven't shared it yet. I've just been waiting. <laughs> Oh, Fine. God. I'll give myself a yellow card at some point in this match. Uh, in this match. See? <laughs> I'm in the game, Kev. I'm in the game. 
Um, Ola Sula, Ola Sola, what a beautiful name. Consistency is the most difficult attribute for a young team to cultivate because it requires discipline and commitment across the entire team. And that's not easy when you're young. Keeping Ola Sola, Ola Sola, <laughs> they have been showing that, haven't they? They've been showing it. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying that we are where the Man City or Liverpool are, but we, we can't really argue with the points we've accumulated. Yeah, there's been some bad performances here and there. We haven't got beat. We've picked points up. So, you know, it's, um, I think it's, it's, it's fair to say that our foundation is slowly being built. Yeah. And, and notice too, Anik, by the way, Josh Kroenke comes out and does the interview whilst the foundation is slowly building. Good time to come out and talk to the press when we were in the dregs and being thrown darts at. Adu and Mikel were like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. and now Josh is coming out, Kev, to have a word with Sky Sports. Well, do you know what, Soph? Here's the, here's the, here's the funny thing. The ownership of, they have come out and said things and they know that the fan base are, have been against them, etc. But they still have come out and said things, you know, be, be very excited, remember? Be very yes. excited and all that. And the, fa the fan base are just down tools on them. Yes. But if, if, if the team are doing okay, they should come out and speak because you know what? What's the point in not coming out and speaking when the team are doing okay? I think that's fair because we, we, we can't we can't have it, but we can't have it one way only. You know, yeah. when things are going bad, they speak, and when things are going good, shut them up. No, no, they're owners. So. Yeah, they're businessmen. Yeah. They like you know, businessmen come out when the PR is good, and when it isn't, they send the PR team out, and there's a full guy. It's just, <laughs> it's just, how, it's just how you know it works. the you know the drill. Oh, though. I've you stood in drill. front and been the dartboard, been in yes. PR my um my whole life. Having okay, to let's, <laughs> yes, um, I will continue to put up your answers as we go to question number two. It's Kevin says. There are um, almost 300 of you in live chat. You know what to do. Guys, come on. On the way in, just, just touch that. Caress it. Nut it if you have to. Do a Vinny and smash that like, please. If you ain't that lot down the road. <laughs> One day you may, I might lick this microphone, Kev. <laughs> lick it, lick it. <laughs> Question number two. Can the Arsenal be the surprise team this season and get up in and challenge for that top four spot. Can we be the surprise package? Question number two. It's a good question. It's a good question, Kev. Um, and I think in terms of fourth place, but I'm going to deliver for, for Liz because she's awesome. There you go. Here's it's Vinny. it. There, there you go. go. Vinny. There's yep, Vinny. Love it. Vinny coming out. Um, I, I think because Tottenham... Okay, we'll see what's going to happen with them under Antonio no, 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 Conte. No, no. They still let's, have the let's, same let's, place. Let's, let's not even discuss them. No, uh, you got off. United struggling under Ole, but the, the the point is, is the surprise package with fourth being up for grabs, I think. You yeah. know, West Ham have got a lot of football. They're in all the cups. They're in the Europa League. They've got the pressure of the Premier League. Now, the expectations. Injuries, gonna, injuries. They're two injuries away from struggling, mm -hmm. right? I have a feeling Jesse Lingard might come back to them in January, um, Kev. But let's just see what the, um, the, the squaddies think because... I think that there's going to be a surprise package finishing fourth, and it could be it could be us. Stephen says consistency will get fourth place. Dennis says it's too late to be a surprise now. We're already making a statement. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Well, just look at the answers to the first one a about slowly building a foundation. There's a load of people saying, no, we'll have to wait until the end of the season, wait until, you know, next, wait until the after the Man United game, wait until this, wait until that. So what is it, squaddies? It's either mm. we're slowly building a foundation, or if we're not a surprise anymore, we have built a foundation. Um, <laughs> I, no, I, Kev, I think, I think 
we don't always agree, but I do, I, I agree with you on, on this front, you know, um, in the sense that at one point, what point are you going to give credit, even though you've been critical? I think, I think that's really, really important. Um, let's get to more of these answers. Uh, that's a Spurs fan, isn't it? Apple, yeah, Apple's Ethel. Done. He always comes back. Nice he loves one. us. Nice one. Nice one. And you know what? Yes. Well done, Demsec. Conte was garbage against Arsenal. Just hashtag just saying. Uh, Guna Vettel says, fantastic question, Kevin. Yes, we can because United is struggling and they will probably keep Ole. Ole at the wheel is a good thing for everybody. Terence says, Brighton are the surprise team. Um, we put that one up. It's a long we season. Up. It's a very long season. And Brighton might not be there. If the squad stays fit, then Sam says yes. Uh, Johnny Boy says we could be the surprise package. Stealth FC. Matthew nice. says yes, we can be the surprise team. I hope so. Cliff says no, we can't. But hope springs eternal. Tell us why you don't think we can, Cliff. We love you and it's good to see you back. Uh, for my mental and trauma sake, I'm not watching Josh speak. Been more waffle. Not sure what that means. Here's I can tell you, you it begins with B and ends in S. <laughs> uh, Simi wants to know what you're smoking, baby. I don't smoke. I don't smoke the trees or nothing, <laughs> Simi. I don't. But the question is, can we be the surprise to challenge for that spot? Never said we're going to get it. I'd love us to get it, but we've got to be challenging for it. All right, Avon says, don't think we've got the depth for top four, but I'd love to be totally wrong. Kev, with AFCON coming, January transfer window, we're going to lose some major players. Let's not let's not joke about it. Just losing a Bamiyang right now and Thomas Party is enough. When you add the other couple players into the mix as well, it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Other, other, teams, other teams will lose players as well. So I know, it's no don't excuse. Don't forget it. Yeah, yeah, so, you know, everybody has to deal with it. Um, Wayne says, being out of Europe, we can. Hastings Guna says, yes, because no one else sees the improvement. Um, Swed Swedish Guna, uh, of course we can. We can even win the league. Oh, Swedish Guna, I love you. But now what are you total, smoking? Total, total positivity. Everyone on the ganja tonight. <laughs> listen, that's some, that's some bubonic <laughs> stuff, man. Any, listen, Swedish Guna. Of course, listen. Mathematically, we can, but I'm with Sophie on this one. I just don't think we're quite there yet. No. Newman says Arsenal won't make top four, even though it's where this squad should be. Mm, should it, Kev? Newman, Newman, before the season <laughs> started, you said Arsenal are going to be nowhere near it. Now you're telling us we should be there. Well, make your mind up. Make your mind up, man. Yeah. Crazy. What is it? This is Newman, by the way. Yes, we can. <laughs> true, uh, true. Future Shock says it's Defo. Still a surprise if come May we're fourth, especially to us. Uh, let's see. Um, let's go down a little bit here, Kev. I've got a couple more for you before we move on. GD says most definitely, but it depends on injuries and the business we do in January to cover for AFCON. Yeah, totally agree. Avon, we're in the foot race with West Ham, Brighton, Man United, Tottenham for fourth. I'd be made up with fifth or sixth. Hey, getting back into European football. And no matter what, people like me have criticised Arteta for eighth, eighth. If we finish fifth, that's an improvement. That's good. We get back into Europe. We've got to be in Europe. Um, Demsek says, if we keep building as we are, I feel top four is achievable. Uh, Mo says, not having European football, a little bit more of what everyone is saying, Kev, too early for um, Grena Grenadian Guna. Um, 31st of December, a lot of people have got some landmarks, Kev, December, mm -hmm. May, you know, post-AFCON. I remember when it was the Spurs game, remember? <laughs> Did someone so, here say that one time? Well, uh, well, listen, the oven's still on. That's what I know. It's on the slow. It's on the slow, but the oven's still on. So, but again, you you, you do that as fans, don't you? You do yeah. put the milestones in and the and, and and the hurdles. But the team at the moment have been getting over certain hurdles. So, fingers crossed. Uh, John, uh, God, 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 Oh, he looks. He sounds Greek. Sounds like one of my people. This is the best rebuild I have seen in ten years. You know what, John? I think you may have a point. 
He, uh, do you know what, Soph? I think he has got a point. And do you know when we were, bu we were buying those players, remember, people were saying, what are they doing? Remember? Mm -hmm. People are questioning Arteta and Edu. What are they doing? Yeah. K Marlon says, we've got the potential. We've got to kick on now. Steven, mm -hmm. he thinks it's possible, de but depends on other teams and injuries. Um, yeah. Olivier, uh, Leicester was a good test. If we beat the Hammers like that, we can. A lot, Kev, I don't blame people like Olivier and others who have said, you beat Leicester, you get a point at Anfield, which is... Well, well look, if, if you get a point or you don't, that's not going to determine where you finish. No. But you've right? got to beat Watford at home. All, all, all the teams in and around you, they're the ones you've got to take down. Really have to take down. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep putting up your responses. Um, Anik, you know, mentioning some of these other teams. Look, West Ham, don't forget, you guys, teams like West Ham, everyone was lauding them last year. They kind of failed at the end. They ended up in the Europa League. A huge result for West Ham, let's be honest. Leicester City, everyone was talking about them and, and lauding Brendan Rodgers. Two seasons, two seasons in a row, they fall out of that Champions League spot. They end up in Europa League. So nothing's guaranteed. And remember, Leicester and West Ham are playing in multiple competitions. So, you know... I think we have the edge there not having European football, Kevin, and yep. it's the perfect recipe to get back into European football, right? 300 plus of you in live chat. I will keep your comments up as we get to question number three here on Kevin Says Live Q&A from the Highbury squad. Here we go. Try not to let the glamour blind your eyes. Wow. Question number three, the bonus. Get ready. So, squaddies and anybody who's listening, what will Mikel Arteta have to do to be accepted by the majority of the Arsenal fans? What would he have to do? That's question number three. That's an important one moving forward. Okay, so let me recap. Are we slowly seeing a proper foundation being built at the Arsenal for years to come? Number two, can the Arsenal be the surprise team, package, whatever you want to call it, this season and challenge for that top four spot? And last but not least, number three, what will Mikel Arteta have to do to be accepted by the majority of the Arsenal fans? which is a fair shout. Anyway, squaddies, get your thinking caps on, get answering, get putting all the comments on, hit the like button, don't forget, or else you get your neck broke, you know that, or Sophie will take your head off with the samurai, you know how she goes. But what I will say is, come on guys, uh, don't let me have to deal with you, we're gonna engage, and we'll have a good show. Look after yourselves, Thanks for all the support, squaddies. Thank you so much. And I'm going to salute you. And you know what? At ease, squaddies. I'm out. It's <laughs> my favourite. I'm like this. You know, it's... <laughs> At ease, buddy. And then I just bring this out. I chop you. <laughs> there you go. It's like off there. The broke up the deck, man. The broke, broke the top. And of course, don't forget, we're going to re-engage in this, but the Brock the Neck um, limited edition uh, swag is available and the description is in the show. So take a look at that. We'll be doing some special stuff with it uh, during the international break as well. And I always promise that and I haven't delivered yet on giving you a free swag, but you guys getting yellow cards, you got to wait now. All right. Okay. Kev, that's a really good question. What does he have to do? Well, what he did was he won an FA Cup in his first six months as manager. And that kind of set everyone on fire, right? Mm -hmm. Craig says he's got to get us back into Europe and win a cup competition. You mean win another yeah. cup? Yeah, see, it's another cup competition. Because <laughs> he's already won one, Craig. <laughs> 
I mean, let's be honest. The the difference is the love coupons of the FA Cup have expired when it comes to the Premier League. So that's the difference. Mark, are you being sarcastic again? Right? Taib, get him out. Uh, top four for um, learning for kids. I uh, love that uh, screen screen name as well. Uh, Mo says, simple, Kev, keep winning. I like it, Mo. I like it. Nice and to the point. Uh, let's see. We also have finished fourth or very close. Matthew says, keep winning. Um, Tebow says, win the league. Uh Sentiment FC is very angry tonight. He keeps plugging these, and I've found this one. He goes, Arteta out, up, Arteta out, up your standard, Zidane in. Zidane in the Premier League without budget? Are you guys crazy? I'm not Thank I'm not you, sure. Brian. Thank you very much, Brian. Yeah. I got a lot of compliments about the suit, Kev. There's tons of them. Yes, uh, okay, so... Let me go back down. I have to go back down to find the the fresh comments about the Arteta question because it it really is spawning um, some interesting. Well, Sophie, hold on a minute. Hold on a yeah, minute. West, on. West Ham has better players than Arsenal. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. No chance. They've got better players than us. No chance. They've got a more experienced manager who's they've, doing they, bits they, after. They've being... got they've got experienced manager mm -hmm. and a team who have been playing together for a couple of seasons. Yeah. We've just been put together nine games ago. So, <laughs> come on now. Right. Uh, let's talk about uh, this. Patrick says, keep getting results. Demsex says, win the league. <laughs> okay, the now funny you guys are getting... Shit, <laughs> Demsex. <laughs> Cheeky bugger. <laughs> win the quintuple. Come on, Simi. Bless. I will accept Mikel if he gives me two million. Okay, you guys. Hey, hold on. <laughs> what is Simi smoking? <laughs> Everyone's smoking tonight. Challenge for the title. Not yes. Okay, I understand what Future Shock is saying here. For me, you remember my answer to your question, Kev. Be competitive. You don't have to win it, but yeah, you got to yes. be in it. Right. Raul says top six. Um, the Spurs fan is. I tell you, I think he's a gooner, Kev. Double O Bond for you. Uh, with the old outfit. Steven says, fifth and cup, playing fast attack in football. I would love to win the League Cup. Last season, I wanted to win the Europa League. I didn't care where we finished in the league because the Europa League would well, get us did. back into Europe. Well, you did. Well, after it. the fact, I did, yeah. No, but you did care. <laughs> Let's have it right, Sophie. It does matter. It does. We're Arsenal fans. <laughs> look, look behind Any the Anyone for tennis? Hold on. <laughs> I, could, I tell you what, there's a nice aroma coming from that oven. Is it pumpkin, apple pie? I tell you what, there's about four in it. There's one for Curtis Shore in there as Ev well, I tell you. Evgeny was just blinded by your glamour, Kev, to even answer the question. Bargav oh, okay. says it's going to take a lot of time. He's got to win every week for a long time. The divide is too deep. I think that's an honest response. The divide is too deep. Well, yes. Uh, well, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. A very long time is how long? See, that's that's infinity, isn't it? You you can't put a number on it. Yeah. Can't put a time on it. So, what do you mm. think about what Chris says? Be a little less arrogant. I like this one. Mm. I'm not too sure. I think he has to be confident in himself. Uh, listen, what that manager's had to put put up with. And the stick and 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 the the people that are against him and still against him, mm -hmm. he's he's coming through it. You know he's he's got something about him, and I like it. He's not listening to the noise. He's getting on with his job. I like yeah. it. I smell. Do you know like when you can smell a cigar sometimes, but no one's smoking a cigar? What's that well, about? It, it ain't from England. I can tell you that much. A bit happening to me. <laughs> it ain't from England. I tell you. <laughs> it's all this suggestion it's of Vinny. smoking. It's Vinny. Vinny's at it, isn't he? <laughs> um, Avon says, "Keep winning, get us back to Europe, and slap a few of the big sides after Christmas." I like that. Richard says, "Yes, one yes." Oh, that's answering all three questions. Uh, Raúl says, "Be consistent and logical." Some of his decisions are flabbergasting. Uh, Johnny Boy says, win and win often. Consistent performances will only be tolerated. Right. I will continue to put your comments up. Keep them going. Keep 
competing top six and cup, Carabao and top four. Stop giving excuses. Um, Arteta would have to bring Daniel Ek into the dugout. Screw Daniel Ek, you guys. He's got a smidgen of the money the Cronkies have. Stop with the Daniel Ek agenda. They're never, ever, ever, ever Trevor going to sell to Daniel Ek, ever. And I believe that Sky interview that's going to come out this weekend will confirm that. Right, Super Kev, as you give your answers, I will continue to put up the squaddies. And by the way, the behavior tonight from the yellow-carded folks. Impeccable, Inch right? Impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're obviously not thinking of Ruby Murray's, are they? <laughs> All right. Anyway, number one, are we slowly seeing a proper foundation being built at the Arsenal that could settle for years to come? I I wholeheartedly say yes. Because when you actually think about it, we got a goalkeeper who's young. we got Tommy Yasu who's young. Ben White's young. Gabrielle's young. And both Tierney... And Tavares are young. Lakonga's young. Smith Rowe's young. Saka's young. Erdegaard's young. I mean, that's what eight players so I've named who are young players. So you cannot tell me this. They're holding their own at the moment. And in time, they're only really going to get better. We spoke about character. We speak about determination. We speak about getting results. And you know what else, Sophie? We speak about having some personality. Mm -hmm. The team has to have some personality about it. They have to have that camaraderie about it. And that's what they're showing. They're making us proud. They go to Leicester, which was a big potential banana skin, perform, get the win, and celebrate and enjoy it with the fan base. I like it. I'm not saying we are exactly there. And yeah, we are not there, but the foundation is being built slowly but surely. And anybody who don't see it or who thinks, oh, we have to wait until um, Christmas or after Manchester United, well, no. We're starting to see what we've missed, what we've mm -hmm. lacked at the football club. And, and again, that dressing room has been torn apart and is slowly being rebuilt, so, and the results are the proof. Mm -hmm. so. and, and I hear you, Kev, and I think, you know, the proof will definitely be in the May pudding. It will. For well, now, not for the foundation, no. Not for not not, not for the foundation. The fact that that the May pudding is for the next question. Okay, go. Which which is can the Arsenal be the surprise team and challenge for the top four? If we obviously can keep the run going, keep players fit. And because we haven't got European football, the players can recover and we need them to be able to go again and go again and go again. If we could be challenging for that top six, but try and get that top four, Sophie, that is improvement. And that's what, that's what we've wanted. We've wanted improvement. We've wanted to see more consistency. We've mm -hmm. wanted to see the team not finish eighth but to be challenging in the top four. And if we challenge for the top four and we got fifth or six, fans might not be happy. But you know what? We're back in Europe. And I know even when we had a poor season last season, we still had a chance to do it, Sophie. We just couldn't get over the line mm -hmm. in the end. But now I've, I've got a better feeling about this group. I know AFCON's coming if it's on. I know that the, the January window might be really important for us. I know that. But we can only speak about now. I truly believe this Arsenal side could be the surprise package. Really could. And I know when you, 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 you think about the result against Leicester, we're still not getting any real hullabaloo from the media. And I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah, even our regular Tottenham fan just said, I put it up, Ethel, Ethel, I'm going to, I can't, I won't call you Ethel, Ethelston, Ethelston, Ethelston yeah. said that he didn't believe in the research here. I wasn't sure if it was an Arsenal resurgence until they scored Leicester. It was one way traffic. This is coming from a Tottenham fan who doesn't want to pay us any compliments. Let's be honest about it. But he's being and, honest. 
Yeah, yeah, he's being honest. And then also, I think um, someone responded back to you, Kev, on the Arteta thing. Um, was it not Craig? I just, uh, Chris, uh, because you're going to Arteta next. And I wanted to put this up in response to him saying Arteta needs to be less arrogant. He says, Klopp and Pep are confident, but relatable. That's what I meant about Arteta. Be relatable to the fans. So that leads into your next bit a little okay. bit as well. Fantastic. What will what does Mikel Arteta have to do to be accepted by the majority of the Arsenal fans? I don't think he has to be relatable at all. I think he's got to win, Sophie. He's got to win football matches. Because you know what? I like any manager who wins football matches consistently at the Arsenal. He doesn't have to, he doesn't have to be my, my favourite. But you know what? If Arsenal winning, it makes my weekends a lot happier. I had a mm -hmm. lovely weekend last weekend. Me too. And I had a nightmare camel ride coming home. But you know what? I was fine when I got in this seat on the Sunday and we had the show. I was revved up rearing to go. Why? Because the Arsenal done the business the day before. So winning does cure all. It's not gonna, it's not gonna stop people not liking the manager for whatever reason or having an agenda or whatever. But winning is everything so and that's what the manager has to do he has to keep the team winning and if the team go out there and keep winning we're happy because we're, we're supporters and our team have won and you know what whether he's relatable or not he'll be accepted so but i hear what you're saying what do you think is the milestone apart from winning and consistency and winning kev what milestone do you think for you? Is it, if he wins the League Cup this season and we finish outside no, of a European no, spot? No, no. Uh, but again, we, get into, we get into qualification for we, Europa we, League we, through we, the League Cup. We, no, yeah, but we, we need, as you said, Sophie, I use your words, we want to be more consistent. Mm -hmm. So the consistency is shown in the league. Not in the cup. It's the league. We've proven we can win a cup under this manager. The key is, after two eight-place eight finishes, we need to be pushing up that league now. And there's been investment, Sophie. It's been young investment, but there's still been investment. And we're seeing this team kind of start to get a little bit of wind in their sails. Yeah. How long we could keep it going, Sophie? I don't know. But do you know what I know? If the team keep winning, Sophie, Arsenal fans will be a lot happier. Exactly. The first person to email me at the Highbury squad at gmail.com, the Highbury Love squad it, at gmail.com, whose famous quote is this just win, baby. You will get a Brockdenek hat. Okay. The Highbury squad at gmail.com, email me the first time date stamp that i receive tell me whose famous quote just win baby is i will give you a clue for those living around the world it is an american sports person not a european or anywhere else in the world kev how do you summarize your three questions and what you've kind of heard from the group um this evening uh, i summarize my three questions in obviously for me I see there's some progress being made. I see a foundation being put in place. I see the team on a good run. We want it to continue. We want the performances. We want to be up there. I mean, what a great effort it will be if the team can get that result on Sunday and we can be fifth, fourth or whatever in the league going into international break. You know the international break is coming at the wrong time for us. I can't stand it. But if we're if we're in a position like where we should be after the, the weekend's game, then we'll feel a little bit better about ourselves again, won't we? And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, and that's how we're being judged at the moment. You know, international break to international break. We messed up against Brighton the last one. Now we're at home. We've got to take care of business. We cannot be complacent. And that's where... What does Mikel Arteta has to do to be accepted? He has to be able to get the boys on the pitch doing the business and winning. Because if he does that, that's doing his job. 
Okay, so I wanted to put this comment up from Chris because I know you like to answer the tough questions too. And we're going to do that during the international break. I have some absolute classics for Kev to answer from the YouTube comments. Some good, bad and ugly. And you guys know we're unafraid to do it here. Um, Kev, what's your response to Chris here? Casey, more of the usual. I'm willing to concede even a very simple point. Of course, winning cures all. Can you get it back for me, please? Sorry. Oh, I didn't yes, finish sorry. reading. Yes. But with a relatable manager, it's much better. Yeah, of course it's much better. But if you don't even relate to the manager now, why does the manager have to change? He doesn't have to change for anybody. The key mm -hmm. to his job is putting a team out there that can perform and win. That's his job. Mm -hmm. So let's yeah. let him do that. I'll take that. Brilliant stuff. And you guys are sending in a whole bunch of stuff because you want to talk Emil Smith-Rowe scoring goals. We're going to have a lot of really good kind of um, in-depth content for you. Yes, it's a banger. It is Guy Fawkes night tonight. Hope your dogs are safe. If you have dogs, they're not being too freaked out by all the fireworks. Uh, Newman, I kind of agree with this, but we have to be able to play competitive games to qualify for the World Cup. Um, not a lot of people agree with Newman a lot of the time but kev the timing of this really does suck for us doesn't it it really does because really we've got does. players going across all corners all of all the earth the it's all over the place and I, look sophie i know a lot of teams have international players as well and we're not the only team who who gets in this but the, the moment we start building a bit of momentum so an international break comes around and stops us and halts us you know it's 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 been tough it's been really tough for us. And then when they get back, it takes a bit of time for them to connect again. That's just show that they haven't been together a long time. You know, that's what mm -hmm. that is. So totally. we're learning. We are learning. We're learning as a group. The camaraderie will help, but we are learning as a group and we're not quite there yet. Yes, I agree. I agree with that. Um, someone just made a comment that they locked their wife up in a room. I suggest you let her out. <laughs> Just, just a Jesus. tip. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm glad your dogs are fast asleep. A lot of, of Smith Row questions coming in. Smith Row versus Mount. You know, Smith Row not getting on, a, a lock up. in. Bring it up. You do you want to stay for a little bit? Are you? Yeah, yeah? I'm ready for them. I right. broke the neck. I'm a, broke nobody so, neck. So so Kev, a lot of um. The, I know Dublin Gooner, go wash. Anyone, you go wash if you're agreeing with Newman. So Emil Smith-Rowe, Kev, a lot of fans have an issue with the fact that he wasn't selected to the England squad. And I think he's right he wasn't. I do too. Tell me why you think, because it's more important what you think than I think on this one. No, it but isn't. I, no, I it isn't, so your Listen, your opinion is as valid as mine. But I just think Emil Smith-Rowe, although he's playing very well, he isn't ready for that yet. England under-21s, earn your stripes. Just because you're playing well at Arsenal, you're talking about players who have been consistently playing well. I mean, people are talking about Mason Mount. He's just won the Champions League. And the Super Cup. And the just... Super Cup and playing at Chelsea. You know, he's part of the team who got to the final of the Euros. So let's let's stop this nonsense, guys. Let's stop it. Yeah, I think the problem is, Kev, is the form players versus the non-form players. So a lot of people are saying, but I, uh, you always say, uh, an international manager goes with tried and tested players. And a lot of the times, England managers especially go with the named players, right? He's not going to drop Harry Kane, is he? No, of course he's not. not. He's not going to drop... He's the captain. No. He's not going to drop Jack Grealish. Grealish. Sterling, none of them. And you could argue that Tyrone Mings being picked over Ben White. I mean, I know people are hung up on a Mill Smith row, but Tyrone Mings and Villa yeah, right now? He's, 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 he's trusted him. He was there in the Euro. He never let anybody down when he played. So you've got to remember, international managers do not get a lot of time with the players. So when they build a squad and the squad's been pretty successful... You tend to stick with the guys you 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 trust. This, that's normal. Mm -hmm. There are only really a few spots that you could maneuver and possibly change. So the ones on the periphery, like a Sancho, 
Sancho isn't in this time and, you know, a few others. That's the way it goes. So until you, you, you have to be consistent. Smith Rowe has to be more consistent. And then it has to be a clamor through the media as well. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he goes, all right, you know what? There's a slot. Let's get him in. I need to have a look at him. But until that happens, he's going to he's gonna go with his tried and tested, I believe. Kev, can I also just address this that a few people are saying? Because I want, like, fans, you know, a lot of the times we'll look at our London rivals and we'll just want to say something because there are London rivals, right? But think of it the same as how some people right now may not rate Saka or Emil Smith-Rowe or think they're overblown because, you know, they're playing for the Arsenal. Mount is not overrated, mate. <laughs> a few of you have said this in chat, and I'll tell you something. He is underappreciated, Kev. Sophie, Sophie, th th this this is a simple one. The level that Mason Mount has played at, Saka and Smith Rowe haven't played at that level. And one end of story. Sorry, I love the I love the Halen boys. I love our young player. That young man's just won a Champions League final and a Super Cup. Yeah. And I you know? think he would start. And, and, and play and started. These are the differences. These, these guys are playing at a level. I'm telling you, we want our players there. Of course we do. But to say he's, he's overrated, maybe that's in your opinion. But, you know, listen, just like anything, Sophie, just like anything, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. And would Mount start for City or Liverpool? I he's think that for he, he's starting he's for starting Chelsea. Chelsea. And it doesn't matter what. Just won the double European trophy. Like what? I don't understand that. I mean, I I'm not a Chelsea lover. None of us are by any um, stretch of the imagination. But he's a good player. He really is a good player. Um, and I get it. All of you, Saka is better than Mount if he's fit. Like Kev says. It, they haven't even played on the level that Mount has yet. They and made a difference. And made a difference. And let's be honest, he did make a difference to Chelsea last season. And a lot of the times his career started out with being, you know, Frank Lampard's teacher's pet. Mm -hmm. Lo and, and loans. And loans. He's done, he done his loans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That has been a brilliant... I agree with this. Foden is the star. <sighs> Jeez. Foden, Foden's, Foden's brilliant. Oh God, he's he so brilliant. good. He's he so brilliant. good, Kev. He's so brilliant. good. Remember that question I asked um, you, Dan, and uh, Gianni Judges? Uh, mm -hmm. Who would win? Who's more in line for a Ballon d'Or kind of nomination or to at least be in the top three? And I put in Saka and Foden and Mount and I think Greenwood and Rash, not Rashford, some uh, Grealish. Foden is on another level, people. And... Kev, maybe it's because he's playing with De Bruyne and he's played with Aguero and he's playing with Mares and he is coached by Pep and he's been ingrained in this system around these world-class players since the beginning of time. I told you when I saw them train in LA, my mind was blown. I was like, who is this kid? Mm. I remember sending you a video. I'm like, who is this kid? He had Aguero and De Bruyne in training like this. I mean, mm. he's so special. So I, I get it. Our we've guys, got two. We've got two. We've got two special ones. And, and again, you see, Sophie, this is what happens. When you get the top players around these boys, their level goes up. Their level goes up. And you've got to say, Man City have done a wonderful job nurturing him because there was times I thought he should have gone out on loan. But Pep, Kept him there and kept him training with these world-class players. And, and look what's gone on. He's, he's gone on. He's got into that team. And he's a, he's a, listen, he's been brilliant since he was a kid. I yeah. remember, I've, I've seen him from the age of six. Yeah, because your boy Phil was Foden. playing with him. Yeah, yeah, played with him all the way to 16, right? Yeah. But they've nurtured him. They haven't put him in too soon. They've taken their time. There's times where... He was on the bench and wasn't even coming on and he was just in and around it, building himself up mm -hmm. and, and look at him now. But we've got, Phil Foden hasn't done what Saka's done. 
last season. He hasn't no. done that. And and that's the difference. And people are talking about folding in for the Euros. And who come and stole the show? Saka. And he played better than Grealish and Foden, let's it, be honest. It, exactly. So yeah. we've got we've got two players there who can, you know, who are up there, trust and, me. And Kev, you're right. And he's played, let's be honest, in the England team, he's got better players in different positions who can help him. But also look at Emil Smith Rowe this season scoring more goals. Yes. And being more involved, more consistent, be because of the fact that we have better players this yes, season very who are much playing so. with him. Very so, much so, you know what, guys, we're going to have this conversation because one of the players, I had this thing for the show with uh, Lee and Dan the other day, and I ran out of time to do it, but I'm going to do it with Kev next week. And part of it as well is the one I love the most, Kev, and no one pays attention as much because he's in Germany, and that is Jude Bellingham. He is a very special player. So I've got something lined up for next week where we'll talk about them during the international break and where Saka and Emil Smith-Rowe fit into the mix. And also, let's not forget, Aaron Ramsdale made the squad and then there's Ben White who's on the outside looking in. But it, hopefully it won't be too much um, time before he's involved as well. And barring injuries... Ben White has a good season, Kev, if Maguire gets injured or Mings well, or... That's what you want. That's, yep. that, that's the key. The more successful Arsenal are, Sophie, is the more Arsenal players will get a look in at international level. Exactly. Because we're, unpro we're unproven to be consistent. Yes. Right uh, now. So yeah. we, we just, I hope and pray that we, we keep picking up these wins. So <clears throat> keep picking up results. I know. I keep forgetting to say Benjamin. God, slap me on the wrist. He does not like being called Ben. I'll tell you what, he would have been he would have been getting called Ben left, right, and center in our dressing room. I'm telling you. Well, Benjamin. That comment, oh my god, he'd get back. That'd be Ben above his in his, his locker or above his, his hook and that. Oh my god. He'd be getting battered, oh, honestly. Superb. All right, before I hand over to Kev uh to close the show. Benny White, exactly. Do you remember Benny from, was it Crossroads? Crossroads, Crossroads. Oh my God, what yeah. a show. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Johnny Boy. Um, and thank you, Spurs fan, uh, Frenemies. Mm -hmm. That was a good show once. Mm -hmm. um, it's been real. It's been a happy Friday. Thanks, uh, Craig. Thank you, everybody. We're closing the show now, but stay tuned for just one second. Some housekeeping items for next week. Even though it's International Week, the squaddies. So, yes. So what's your score for the game? I'm, I'm going 3 0. Okay. I was going to do that and I wanted to get your prediction on the Manchester Derby as well. So I'm going to go 4 1. 4 1. Okay. I'm going to write like it down it. along with all my yellow, my yellow card notes here. <laughs> <laughs> 4 1 to the Gunners. And then what do you think is going to happen in the Manchester Derby? I think City are going to win. City tend to win at Old Trafford, mm -hmm. United tend to win at mm -hmm. Etihad. It's, it's, I, I still think, you know, after watching Manchester United, they're still not right at the back. They're still not right. Conceding too many cheap goals. Yeah. Uh, we've got a, a resounding victory for the Arsenal in the chat, Kev. I fancy. I think Olga's going to. I, fancy... I think Olga. I, I think Olga's going to liven I, up. I love, love him to get a hat trick, Kev. That would be great. So I'll take that. Off. I'll take that. I'll take yeah. three from over. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll do... Oh, so we've got 4-1. Kev says 3-0. Um, you guys have City winning uh, in the derby. It's going to be a good... Hopefully be <laughs> a good game. Look at Jake Snacks. Look, 6-0. 7-0. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Listen, do not underestimate tell you what, Man United. I'll, I'll tell, tell you what. You. With Ronaldo, I'm telling you guys. It is I'll tell not... You, listen... <laughs> <laughs> Just... yeah, I think I think they I think they're gonna hurt Man United. If they if they bitch slap them, Kev, what ha you lose five nil to Liverpool? If you yeah. if they lose like four nil or something, well, they, he... they, Oli's not going anywhere. I'm telling you now, it's not. Yeah. Because if there was a time for him to go, it's after five nil to your like to yeah. your rivals. He's not going it anywhere. Is. They're is. not gonna they're not gonna panic. All right, so next week, even though it's International Week, the Highbury Squad continues live every day. We go back to our normal schedule of 8 p.m. other than Monday. Okay, so 8 p.m. the whole week other than Monday. 
Super Kev is on Sky Sports this weekend for the Watford game. You're not going to want to miss that. No, okay. no, no. I am in the studio. In the studio, yeah. At Sky Sports News, 10 till 12. I finish and then I'm on my way to the Emirates to watch it as a fan. I love it. Are you going to sit in one of those fancy boxes or are you going to sit Not, in the crowd? It's it's funny. I started off getting a, a little seat in the stand. Yeah. And now I've been moved up a couple of places. I bet Just you have, Super Kim. That's I have, how it I'm, should be. I've been moved up a couple of places. <laughs> so hopefully I could take a few pictures and I could send them to you. I and, will um, love yeah. that. And we'll post them up as well. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, okay. And then next week, look out for some premieres. We've got another, a couple of episodes coming up of Kev's Who Are You series uh, with Danny and a couple of other surprise guests that you may not expect. All right. So look out for that. We'll have another new episode of Talented Gooners. And it is going to be the premiere. I believe we may be the first podcast show to do this we have officially um a new show called safe hands the goalkeeper show where all we focus on is goalkeepers kev you you say they're crazy right they're crazy <laughs> they're, they're either boring as anything and crazy <laughs> or they're mad as a box of frogs and crazy right right they're, they're either one way or the other but crazy <laughs> is the common denominator <laughs> Well, we're really excited about this show. It's totally different to anything that we do. Uh, Mike from You Are My Arsenal, who's been a goalkeeping um, coach for many, many years, is going to come on and do f some bits for us. And we're going to have some very special guests along the way as well in true Highbury squad style. And of course, we'll have Monday Madness. We'll have a Wednesday Women update for the Arsenal women with a new... And Super Kev will return for Kevin Says as well. So lots of good stuff. Kev, that's all I've got. Well, what, what, what a host to the show, Soph. Done, done us proud yet again, as always. Set us up for the game on Sunday, haven't you? Tomorrow, we could sit back and watch some of the teams. Hopefully, they'll struggle a bit and, and, and give us that platform to win on Sunday so we can move up that table and feel proud, obviously, during the international break. But one thing I will say, Sophie, that list you've got of all the squaddies that got carded, right? Look at the list. I mean, it's like a register at school, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah. All they the have jokes as well, Kev. Look, all, yeah, of it, all of it. They've yeah. behaved themselves. They've behaved themselves today. And They um, have. They really have. They've behaved themselves. So fair, fair play to your squaddies. And everybody, Mr. Waffles, hostess with the most is, yes, there's my guy. Mr. Waffles is back in the house. Good to, good to see you. But look, everyone, I want you to have a nice Friday night. Look at this, Kev. Squaddies, are we going to appeal our yellows on Twitter? Please do. Please do, Matty. Please do. You're getting nowhere. You're getting nowhere. <laughs> we need an nowhere. exhibit A of Newman's art to help you, though. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Could you God. imagine what Newman will put together for the squaddies? Sorry, squaddy? sorry, Kev. I had to no, put that one no up for problem. you. No problem. No, that's brilliant. <laughs> so listen, squaddies, look after yourselves. Take good care. Look after your families. Keep smiling. And you know what comes next. Squaddies, I salute you. And at ease. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. <laughs>